Hi, I'm Kate Sylvia. I'm going to talk a little bit today about a new program from our friends at Topaz Labs called Topaz Texture Effects. This is a plugin for Photoshop CS4 and Up, CC, Element 6, PaintShop Pro, Serif Photo Plus X5, and Lightroom. Your system requirements for this program are going to be Mac Operating System 10.8 and Up, Windows 7, 8, 10, 64-bit, and OpenGL 3.2. It does not support Windows 32-bit. Just wanted to show you some before and afters uh, so you can get kind of an idea of what this program is all about. If you've used textures in the past, uh, this is just going to be an additional uh, outlet for you to uh, do your texture effects. And it's going to be a real fun one, too. So, Lighthouse in South Carolina with one of the effects. Most of these are presets that I chose and then did some adjustments on my own within the preset. So let's get into the program. Once you open an image within the program, you are presented with this, this, this screen by default. It has a list of featured presets off to the right. And you can always click on this button up top that, to view your original photo. There's the original that I brought in here. And along the right side, are all of the uh, featured presets that you will see automatically. If you want to see all of the presets that are available, you can just click on All Effects from this drop-down menu, and you can see all of them. And as you scroll through here, you can have a nice little preview of what each of these presets will look like. So if you see one that just kind of jumps out at you, then by all means uh, click on that. And uh, let's see. Let's try this one. Once you see one that you like, and you can click on the little preset here, you have options to not only just choose that one preset, but you can change that. So you click in here, and it opens up this window, and it shows you all of the adjustments that have been added to this one uh, preset that you've chosen. Now, as I hover over these other textures in here, it, I don't have to click on any of them because as soon as I get off of that, it goes right back to the one that was originally chosen. But if I hover over these, it shows me a little preview of what each of these textures is going to do with this image, which I really like being able to do that without having to click on them. And I actually kind of like this one right here, so we'll choose that. And you can open up any of these uh, menu items and make changes as you need, the basic adjustment panel, for uh, highlights, shadows, brightness, um, you know, just basic adjustments, like just like it says, and uh, the diffusion of this particular image. And you can take these uh, things away as well. If you want to delete a, a texture layer or delete the diffusion layer, uh, these are behaving very similar to, to Photoshop layers. You're just adding more and more uh, effects as you go along. Now, if you like what you have picked here, as far as the preset is concerned, you can come in here and make changes, or you can add another adjustment. So if I click on Add Adjustment, I have the choice of choosing an edge blur, posturize it, adding a border if I wanted to add a border. And again, as I hover over these, I get a nice little preview of what each and every one of these is going to look like. So say I like this one. There we go. And I come back here to the texture, and I go, you know, this isn't looking quite right, so you can actually flip the texture back and forth and up and down based on these two uh, buttons right here. You can change the size of the texture, increase it and decrease it, spread it around. You can keep the aspect ratio if you've got a square photo or a 2 by 3 or a 4 by 6 or whatever. Um, you can keep maintain the aspect ratio as far as the texture is concerned, and you can change the opacity of the texture increase it and decrease it. The blending mode. This is what I really love about this program is it gives you all of the blending modes that you would have within Photoshop. So if you're familiar with Photoshop's blending modes, you can come in through here and just hover over each of these and see how the effect changes as you go from one blending mode to the next. So if you're a real fan of, of overlay with a lot of your textures, you can just click on that here. Um, I actually really enjoyed the uh, color burn that was a, originally came in here. If you make changes and you change your mind, um, like I said, you could either delete it or you can click on reset. If I click on reset, so, oh yeah, all parameters, everything will go back to normal. So I'm gonna say cancel because I've actually made some changes that I like. 
so I'm going to keep that. But it will reset all of these panels back to the original. If you want to reset just one panel, you can click this button right here and it resets that one filter. So if I wanted to reset diffusion, I would click that one. If I wanted to reset my texture, I would click this one. From this point, you have a couple of options. You can save this effect as a new effect, and then the next time you go to the menu here, it will be under, listed under one of your effects. So it will show up when you click on all effects, and it will show up when you click on my effects. So if you like creating your own stuff, you can, you can do that and just save it with your own uh, preset name. So I'm going to go back here. So that's one that I've selected. If I want to add it to my favorites category, I just click on the little heart. If I want to browse, there's a, a different way to look at these, not just this uh, menu on the, on the right here, but if you click on the browse view, you can not only look at these menu items, but it gives you the option, local is what's on my computer, what came with the program originally. Community, however, and this is a really neat addition to uh, the new Topaz software, is the ability to share your presets with other people or to even download what other people have created and add them to your list of presets. And this, I will tell you, with a community of people sharing, it can get a little overwhelming. So they've given you some ways to kind of narrow down uh, how you find these. And I can do my shared effects, things that I have shared with other people, and you can narrow it by type. If I'm looking for a uh, gritty grunge, if I'm looking for a vintage look, I can narrow it down that way. And I can also narrow it down by the type of photo that I think that this preset would be good for. I'm looking at a landscape image right now, so I might choose landscapes or nature. Um, if I had a person, I would pick portraits and so on and so forth. I'm doing a wedding, I might pick wedding, but it helps to narrow down the field so that you don't necessarily have to be overwhelmed by thousands of <laughs> presets because who's got time for that? Anyway, um, and if you want to add a, a tag to it, if you're looking for something very specific, something that has blue in it or something that has grunge in the title, um, if you tap on that uh, search field right there, it will allow you to kind of narrow things down that way. As I go through here, lots and lots of possibilities. These are ones that uh, the community has shared already, which is fantastic. I mean, look at all of these. This is a brand new product and we already have this many uh, available being shared. So you can see how this list right here is going to just grow with time. It's gonna be a fantastic outlet for you. So I'm gonna close that out and here I am right back where I was. So again, let's see, here's the original view. Here's the default that popped right back up again. Unfortunately, I, uh, if I don't save the glowing bright preset that I kind of worked on and, and saved or, or was working on earlier, as soon as I got out of that, it kind of disappeared. So if I don't choose that, um, it, I'm, I'm afraid I'm gonna lose it. So after I've chosen my uh, presets, I also wanted to point out one more thing. Right now I'm looking at all of the textures, but you can open up the uh, texture manager here and you can narrow the field down to a particular type. If you're looking for heavy grunge, papers and textiles, things like that. And if you've downloaded any, uh, they will be in here and you can import them from right there which is a lot of fun. Again, <laughs> why not have more, right? <laughs> There's a ton in here already, but why not have more? Wanted to point out the um, masking abilities here. Uh, each of these uh, filters has got a mask available. Uh, the default here for a spot, if I place the center, I can move it over here or over here. I can change the shape of this shape and size and I can rotate it. Let's make this a little bit harder. Transition, if I make the transition really hard, you can see exactly where this is and where it's going. So I can affect the transition. Let's make it real hard so we can see what we're doing. And I can move the center over here or over here. So if I wanted the log to be a little bit more natural looking, I might uh, put a spot right over here and then have kind of a heavy transition out. And that way, let's see. 
and I can reverse it. Have the have when I click on the invert button here, it has it only apply that texture to this area and it ignores the rest of the photo. If I go back, it has it applied to the rest of the photo, but it ignores it in a nice transitional manner right here. Another thing available, if I click none, I can click on brush. And now I have the, the ability, just like any other Photoshop brush, the strength is 100. I'm going to make the hardness zero so we can really see what we're doing. Is actually, I'm sorry, make it 100 so we can really see what we're doing. Now if I brush here, I have a very hard edged brush so you can see exactly where I'm removing the effect and making it look kind of silly. Um, <laughs> thank goodness for reset buttons. Right here, reset button, or you can undo one step at a time right here and redo it right here in case you were having second thoughts about anything and then I can reset it right there. But if I wanted to again brush the effect out of this little area right here I could choose a hardness of zero, very small brush size and then just take the effect out of where I want or increase the brush size or maybe 50 percent on the strength and it just removes it a little bit um, and so you can do this selectively and, and you get this beautiful mask to show you exactly what you are doing and where you are doing it. I'm going to click on none so that resets because I want the texture to be applied to the entire thing. At the bottom of the list you have the ability to add an adjustment like we did before. So I'm going to put my border back. Which one did I? I like that one. Here I've got the border selected and again just like every other filter I have the ability to mask out some of that border. So if I wanted to take the brush and maybe put it down to 50% if I thought the border was just a bit much. I could take away 50% of that border all the way around and make it very subtle. Undo that because I kind of like the border. And there we go. And now here I can click on my original and my after and I can save it to my desktop or I can just quit and exit out of the program. Real briefly I want to show you how to create your own uh, texture from scratch. If you come up uh, when you're in this window, this initial window that opens up, when you come up here to the far right corner and you click on create an empty effect, you are just starting from scratch. So you're going to add your own adjustments. So say you want to start out with some basic adjustments to adjust uh, shadows and highlights, maybe a little clarity, and then I'm going to add another adjustment. I'm just winging it here. <laughs> um, let's do a texture. And I think I'm on the normal blending mode. I might move it to overlay just to see what these look like on overlay. Kind of like that one. Maybe increase that a little bit. Maybe brush some of the effect out of the actual fountain. Just a little bit. So I brought the strength down to about 50% there. Get rid of just about half of the effect on the fountain. But that's just for the textures. I'm not uh, getting rid of what I've done in the basic panel. There we go. You can see the slightly messy mask there. <laughs> if I add another adjustment, say I want another border or I want to add some film grain. You can change the size and strength of your film grain. The opacity. And let's see, light leaks. Ooh. That doesn't quite look right since the uh, source of light is actually coming from directly behind the fountain. Uh, but if you want to add a light leak, some of these effects can be really neat. I'm not going to do that right here. Maybe finish it off with a border. A little bit of a vignette. It did, however, let's see. took away. There we go. It made the center I think just a little bit too dark for my taste. So there's a little vignette. Maybe lower the opacity so it's just a touch before and after. Quick, easy, lots of fun. And that is your introduction to the new Topaz texture effects. Have fun!